Oh, hi. Welcome back. I'm very tired today. Who else is feeling the Sunday scaries already? Um, alright, let's pull up the chat. Welcome to another weekend of clean out the fridge. Thankfully, the fridge is uh, pretty clean so far. I did a good job with Budget Eats that... Well, okay, it... <laughs> I say it's clean and then I open it and it's all filled with stuff. Um, we're gonna cook this. Um, this is our cracker dough, so we're gonna cook that. The rest of this stuff is just, oh, that's my cake from yesterday. We're gonna maybe eat a piece of that cake. I mean, otherwise it's pretty clear, you know, it, do, it really doesn't get better than this for me. Um, so. I don't know if you saw my story maybe last week, 10 days ago, I don't know, but the New York Times sent out, New York Times Cooking sent out a newsletter that was like um, introducing this kind of Cantonese treatment of iceberg, which is stir frying it, which brought back very unpleasant childhood memories of my father <laughs> taking iceberg lettuce, which is one of the cheapest produce you can probably buy um, before inflation happened. Now it's like three fifty dollars for a head of iceberg, which is fucking insane because this shit is just mostly water. Uh, anyway, I digress. Dad used to cut this up, stir fry it with very minimal seasoning, and then I would have to eat this kind of limp, watery, slightly crunchy, slightly warm, slightly buttery vegetable and it was just very confusing and at the time I thought it was the most disgusting thing I had ever eaten um and I just never went back to iceberg ever again unless you know it's served in a burger then of course fine but I think it's time that we revisit the trauma <laughs> and alter it perhaps by seasoning it a little bit better. I have to use up this head of lettuce. It is now a week old. Um, and we're gonna stir fry it. And it's gonna be hopefully more delicious than I remember it being. We are also gonna go ahead and try to roll out this buckwheat cracker dough that we made yesterday and bake it. It's kind of crumbly. The buckwheat is not holding very well. I probably should have cooked the mochi into like a paste and then worked it into the dough, but it's too late for that, so. We're just gonna make do with what we have and try to make the best of it. And these jars were the ones that we emptied. One was the duca, one was the persimmon jam. I kind of scrubbed off the label, but you could see there's still some residue. Anyway, nice jars. We can reuse them. And as you may remember, we made a cake last night that we didn't get to taste. Yes, we made this one, which is my buckwheat one. Um, which Aaron is welcome to try too, if he should like. This is our persimmon buckwheat cake. Um, I'm gonna have a little bite of it because it was really delicious last night. I put it in the fridge just to see how it would change the texture. Cause usually when you put cake in the fridge, it's kind of like dry. I never put bread in the fridge, so. Ooh, ooh, this, uh this smells more like Sarah Lee pound cake now overnight. Wow. Ooh, that smells good. And you were right. I made a little more syrup for myself after I turned off the live and I drizzled it over the cake. Made it way better. So if your cake ever turns out dry, just poke a few holes in it. Make a watery sugar syrup, flavor it with some of your favorite spices, and just brush it over the cake. Yum. That was really good. Great experiment, June. And the other cake... I have since decorated. This is the cake that we made for Aaron. Um, this is the, uh, June's take on Persian love cake. Woo! Yeah! 
it is marbled so there's a chocolate bit which unfortunately got stuck to the pan a little bit you can see it didn't turn out very good on the chocolate bits it kind of clung the uh, the plain cake turned out fine I decorated it with a syrup Ooh, I just blew pistachio everywhere on my kitchen sorry um, the syrup is light pink because I used some pomegranate juice that was sent to me um, it has a little bit of cream cheese in it it has water no sorry it doesn't have water cream cheese powdered sugar um, pomegranate juice maybe a little touch more orange blossom water um, I spread it all over and then we crushed up some pistachios to go out on the outside. We used some chocolate sprinkles that Aaron's dad brought us from his travels abroad like maybe three years ago before the pandemic ever happened potentially. And then in the middle I crushed up some of mom's rose petals. I also dusted some rose petals around the pistachio ring for some color contrast and then I finally had some orange zest left over to combine with the rose petals in the morning. Um, do you want to come take a taste, Aaron? Yeah. So, here, I wrote the recipe down. I've never tested this recipe before. I don't know how it's going to taste. And then I realized that this is probably not as dense as Aaron would have wanted because... I'll be the judge of that. Which... It's pretty dense. No, it's just dried out overnight. <clears throat> okay, which slice do you want? Do you want a marble slice, a plain slice, a chocolate slice? There's choices on this cake. What do you mean? Just tell me, do you want a plain slice or marble. a chocolatey slice? Marble, marble cake. Because it's both. Yes, okay. You want to grab a plate? Do you want to cut your cake? You can cut. How do I, how do I do this on camera? Okay, let me get set spatula it's not his birthday y'all it's just approximately his birthday it's not my birthday bring the plate wow wow bloop That's um, rose jelly on top? No. Oh, what kind of jelly is it? It's a uh, cream cheese pomegranate. Mmm. June, I love this cake. I love it a lot. How does it measure up? I don't know. It's been so long since I had the Persian love cake by chef somebody. I forgot. Zoe Kanan? Kazan? Maybe. Probably. Freehand Hotel. Yeah. She used to have a cafe at the Freehand Hotel, mm -hmm. but it shut down during the pandemic. Do you like the marble? I do. Do not, I love everything about this cake, seriously. <sighs> 10 out of 10 cake. Ah! <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect? Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's beautiful. It's colorful. This is a gluten-free cake, y'all. This You nailed the sweetness level. This is exactly the kind of sweetness I want in any, every cake. You taste it now. I did. I liked it. It was really good, guys. It had I, a real piece. I tasted the um, rose. Do you want one more? Yes, I'll take another small slice. Do you want more chocolate or marble or all white? Doesn't matter. It's all excellent. I'm going to give you a chocolate. This slice? This big? Yeah. 
Thank you. Yes. And you know, I'm always honest about this, June. Brilliant work. One of your finest ever. I'm so baked happy. Treats. I'm so glad. Thank you. And for eating. I'm gonna have us like my other cake too. It's a cakey day, guys. But yes, there you have it. That's the uh, that's the marbliness of it. I like it because you have slices that are more plain, and you have slices that are more chocolate. Um, and overall, I would say we have a success. Here's my cake, the buckwheat cake. Here's the birthday cake. And here's the crummy, syrupy. It's so syrupy, it's fudgy. Like it wasn't fudgy when it came out of the oven, but it's fudgy now. So um, I'm just gonna eat the two of them together. But I will say the rose water melts so well into the chocolate. And the rose water I think is in the cake and then there's orange blossom water in the syrup that got soaked into the cake as well as the icing. Nice. Maybe I should make a video about this recipe. I can't, I can't really tell if people who watch this channel like the edited stuff more or the live stuff more. The texture is very wet, but not drippy wet, like well soaked, well hydrated. Um, imagine if you had baklava, but instead of phyllo you just had cake. Because baklava, for the most part, is kind of honey drenched, but it's not like soppy. You know what I mean? You prefer unedited because it's anti-capitalism. <laughs> uh, explain! Should we freeze this cake or should we keep it out? Did it say 
satiate any of your yearnings for personal love cake? Very much so. I like your take on it. Let's gram it. Baby, do it for the gram. If you didn't gram it, did it even happen? Um, I use almond flour, so it is gluten free. can't take a good photo. The lighting is horrible. Okay, that's acceptable. I gotta be honest with you. I don't like I don't like keto dessert. It's just always fake sugar um, that gets to me. I did develop a keto peanut butter sandy cookie for Delish that I really liked. It's based off of a New York Times peanut butter sandy cookie recipe. Um, and the reason why it works is you don't have to use a whole lot of sweetener in it, so it doesn't really give you that overwhelming sweetener taste. Gotta be honest with you, I'm not sure what Galbi Jean is. I'm sorry. I'm not very well versed in Korean cuisine. I just know I just know like the three dishes that I like to eat. You don't know how I drink tap? Girl. Have you come to New York and drunk tap before? Because New York tap is pretty damn good. cracker episode I mean all of these ideas I can do it's just obviously gonna be on my personal channel because I don't think it's gonna be enough of an SEO pull for delish to want to do and I just like keeping some things to myself you know all right let's get some crackers going, shall we? Yotel recipe on delish that's the one that I'm probably gonna do I'm not going to be frying any Yotel today uh, I basically visited my grandma today and she basically told me in her very indirect way that she's tired of the kanji and I said okay after we finish the two containers of kanji I'll make you something else what would you like and she was like manto which is like steamed bread and I was like grandma you don't eat any of the bread that they give you here they give her little uh, dinner rolls, they give her pumpernickel bread, they give her white 
Wonder Bread toast, like all sorts of bread. There's pound cake. She never eats any of it. And I was like, why would you eat steamed bread? It's literally just the same thing. And she's like, I don't like the bread here. And I was like, I know you don't like the bread here because <laughs> you never eat it. And I was like, are you sure you just want steamed bread? And she was like, yeah, I, I want a little difference. And I was like, okay, what do you want me to flavor it with? And she was like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, okay, do you want fillings in it to turn it into a bun? And she's like, that's okay too. And I was like, you gotta give me a direction. Um, so at last she was like, can you make, can you bring me some yotia? And I was like, I don't have time to go to Flushing every day to bring you yotia. I can try to make it myself. It's not gonna be the same as the store bought. And she was like, okay. And I was like, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so that's what we're doing. What? I'm gonna deep fry it for her on the day of. Okay, so you're making the dough. I'm making the. I'm just making the dough. I'm not frying anything. Um, the dough will keep in the fridge probably for a week. So. what our dough ended up being it's very crumbly unfortunately so we'll see what happens last time we baked crumbly crackers I just ended up eating the whole tray so that might happen again today which is fine I don't really know why I chose not to put more water in it yesterday that was kind of dumb maybe I'll do that now Always just fixing things as we go. relatively easy thing to pronounce, isn't it? I mean, but you could have also just said mian, which means noodle, right? They could have given you any noodle, but maybe that would have been the problem because then they wouldn't have known which noodle you wanted and then equally confusing for everyone involved. Weevils? I don't think so. I'm gonna cover the cake and I'm gonna leave it at room temperature. I think it'll keep for three days and then we can freeze it. Yotel dough is much more solid than churro dough. Churro has to be piped. Yotel is um, rolled and stretched. I really, really recommend that you start making use of um, your freezer if you have.
freezing is it will always preserve it better than room temp, but sometimes it does obviously affect the flavor. I mean, even if you left something at room temp, it's going to affect the flavor too because time will just, time and oxygen and heat will transform things. You can, you can see the effects of time, oxygen, and heat on your own faces. Um, so obviously it's not going to taste as great. Um, some people have also told me that they don't recommend freezing coffee beans because apparently that takes away the flavor, but I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't really know if that's true. celebrated Mardi Gras. Looks fun though. That means Easter is coming up, right? Or, or Lent. So you have Mardi Gras and then you have Lent. Is that what happens? 40 days of Lent. We start the preheat. the difference. President's Day is tomorrow, indeed. My favorite president, I've always liked Teddy Roosevelt. I think it's because the first thing that comes to mind 
when I think of Teddy Roosevelt, it's all those political political cartoons that just show him in his like big glasses, stomping around with his big ass stick, with his pants rolled up around his knees. It's like, yeah, I could get behind that look. Except I would be wielding like a huge rolling pin. <laughs> I don't know anything about politics, and I really don't care. I was, unfortunately, never good at geography, history, current events. Just never held my attention. My thing is... What? My favorite current event is... Um, I don't, I don't have one. Sorry. Oh, my favorite current event is hating on our New York City mayor, Eric Adams. Is that his name? Um, I saw him actually today at the Jackson Heights Farmer's Market. He had like a huge posse following him. I was just doing my shopping. Well, that didn't tear very well, did it? Fuck. Um, and like this... This like swarm of people is clustering around one of the bread stands and I was like, whoa, what pastry is there today? It must be very good that people are waiting for it. And then I just start to see this group of people like drift away from that stand and I was like, why is the line moving? So I just stood there and I stared and I was like, okay, obviously there's someone important and I had no idea who. So I went up and there was, there was definitely police presence around the area too. So I went up to a guy, I think he was police, he seemed relatively nice, um, and I was like, what's going on here? And he was just like, oh, our mayor's here. And I was like, oh, what's he doing here in Jackson Heights? Pretty sure that guy, I hear he lives in New Jersey, um, doesn't live in Queens. And he was just like, oh, you know, he's just enjoying his Sunday, checking out the farmer's market. And I was like, oh, cool. Is that why he, I don't see him buying anything? I feel like it's probably just a PR stunt because I literally just see him going from stand to stand, just like looking. Obviously not there to do his shopping. How do we fucking elect this guy? Like, you know, I feel like we had some candidates that we could have gone with. But we had to go with this guy, and I don't get it. Very disappointing. Again, this is like, why can't we get our shit together and actually elect someone who's not in cahoots with the police and big companies? <laughs> um, but, you know. I guess we can't. I guess we should just give up. Let's just give up. time tearing your parchment paper because having an incomplete sheet is very very sad and annoying to deal with.
Ay, ay, ay. If you don't vote, you can't whine. Is voting what gives you whining rights? I did vote, so I guess I can whine. But, uh, what's the use of voting or whining? But you still gotta do it. Just like there's no point to living, but you still gotta live it. Because then, what is the alternative exactly? There isn't really a good alternative. Fred's okay, he's sleeping on the bed. Um, he's like really struggling. We tried to order a new kind of food for him. The first time he had it, he threw up and then he seemed very adverse to it. He's really not liking this salmon cam that we got him. Even though I feel like um, when we first adopted him, he really was not picky at all about whatever kind of food. I also got him friskies and I gave that to him and he also ate it with vigor and he threw that up too the first time. But he seemed to have no problem going back to it, but he doesn't like going back to the salmon anymore. So I think he's just getting a little spoiled. He's like, I have choice now. If I don't eat this, maybe they will give me something I like more. Spoiled. like pulling a real Chinese parent move there and he was just like I think we should just leave the food out for him and if he doesn't eat it he'll starve and then once he's hungry enough he'll eat it I was like yep sounds exactly like Chinese parents sometimes I do feel like that is the answer though like what are you going to do when you have no choice you're going to do the only choice that you have left We really have no choice but to live our lives, you know? Like, even if you choose death over life in the current moment, that's still you living your life because life is inclusive of death. So you have no choice. You're here. In a nutshell, we are all Fred. Waiting to have better food. But will it come? Who knows? Guess it all depends on if you have Chinese parents or not. <laughs>
okay, I think I put too much oil on this batch. Ugh, it's fine. Okay, while we are, um, I didn't have any pets growing up. I did discuss this before. My mom got me two chicks one winter in Beijing, which is a very bad idea. You don't want chicks in the winter with uh, owners who have no experience. They both died, sadly. And then I didn't have any pets because I killed two chicks at the age of like six. And I was like, I can't have pets. I killed them. So let's hope I don't kill Fred. It would be nice. That's a nice ring on mom's little cleaver thingy majiggy. Wait, what did I hit it on? Hit it on the countertop. Aaron, do you want any of this uh, iceberg raw before I cook it all? Crunchy water. Do any of you know why iceberg turns pink and red? Is it oxidization or is it going bad? I am familiar with wedge salads. I like them. They're not bad. I would not pay like $12 for them.
You know what? That is a fantastic idea because Aaron bought me Cupine Mayo uh, salad dressing, and I think that would be really fucking delicious. So I'm going to save some iceberg because I don't think this is all going to fit inside the pan anyway. And let's just eat it with that dressing. I need some vegetables in my diet. Speaking of which, have you eaten your vitamins today yet? This is your daily vitamin check. I have not eaten it yet. I shall very shortly, like right now. Where did I go? Oh, it's down here. You should not be storing your vitamins in a clear glass container near heat or sunlight. So, this is what not to do. this from mom's. It was hanging somewhere in her house. I transferred it to the lamp. I couldn't, I couldn't, I still have a floor lamp. By the way, if anybody wants a floor lamp that is very simple, plasticky, metal, white and silver in color with a two-tone light, you can do a soft tone or a bright tone, let me know. It needs to get picked up by Wednesday. <laughs> But I got this from her house. It's a wind chime that I got maybe when I was in high school. So I'm just hanging it over my hood for now. I like it. Smush it into your sandwiches if you'd like. Okay, for now. But will you eat them? Yeah. Okay. Aaron has already made his guest appearance. I guess somebody was late. You snooze, you lose. Yes, that is the Japanese pickled plums that I just recommended. He smashed into his sandwiches. Oh my gosh. Why do you have to be so difficult? This is a, a bit of mom's soybean paste that I opened for that budget eats. going to toast this soybean paste and then turn the oil off because I really don't want to get too splattered 
by the iceberg as I just clean this kitchen. vinegar white pepper dressing that Aaron bought me. It is very, very good. I do like it. And I'm going to put a little bit in a cup so we can dip into it. I have not watched Euphoria. Mmm. Mmm. The iceberg is pure vehicle to deliver this dressing into your mouth. Wow. Just ask why is everybody watching Euphoria and I don't have an answer except I've seen a few clips first of all everyone in that show is fucking beautiful and who doesn't like seeing beautiful people it's also about troubled teenagers which I think are perfect stand-ins for our tortured forever adolescents stuck inside so we get to like project all of our past, current, and future traumas onto beautiful versions of our child, inner child. Um, and we watch, we watch them make sense of it, and we watch them struggle, and we watch them deal with it. I don't know. I don't know the show. I've seen like four minutes of it.
premise of the show, look at these beautiful people. They have problems too. There, there. Feel better about your mediocre lives. I mean, two of the people in that show are like basically models. Uh, they they have modeling careers. Aaron, do you want a buckwheat cracker? Yeah. You want me to bring to you? No. Do you want to dip the buckwheat cracker in our QP mayo dressing? They always make excellent crackers. Those have always been some of my favorite ones from your budgets. Excellent. But not excellent enough to eat another. Oh, that was probably like a 6.7 or 8. Out of Aaron. And he's not disagreeing, so I'm right. Can I add more water? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about making La La's Yo Tail part chickpea flour. Do you think that would work or no? My dad just texted me. He said, today is the 25th anniversary of you arriving in America. I think he's wrong. I think it was yesterday. But what does that matter anyway? <laughs> Golden, thank you so much for your reminder. I'm going to toss the first batch back in, I think. It's looking a little underdone, but I'm going to move some of these off. The problem with homemade crackers is you got to keep a real close eye on some of them. Because of different thicknesses, they cook differently, some of them will burn. So, you just gotta, just gotta keep checking back in. Erin, you know why you don't like these crackers as much? It's because they're not sourdough.
sourdough is the key to good crackers, guys. It gives you that kind of um, cheesy flavor profile that really just pushes it over that kind of slumpy, two-dimensional flavor profile. It gives you more of a umami sensation, I think. Uh, the video thumbnail was our cake that we just ate at the beginning of this live. I'm going to try some of our stir-fried lettuce. Do you have any interest? I'm good. Aaron skedaddled out of there real fast. You know what I didn't think that I could add to this, that I just realized I could add to this, is some MSG. Interesting. That vinegar reminds me of. Oh, weird. The vinegar addition reminds me of like um a pickle that's been sitting in a hamburger from a fast food joint. Would you try stir-fried iceberg or is that out of your comfort level? Alright, let's try with the MSG. required. It makes the vinegar sweeter and um, not as acidic and jarring. Sometimes you add vinegar to a dish and it just seems like it's very sharp. Like it's not really blending in. MSG kind of helps bind that savory and sweet together. MSG will not be in the spice aisle. It would probably be in your international aisle. If at all. It comes in bags. Uh, not jars. But yes, accent is basically MSG too. I think there might be other flavorings in certain kinds of accent, but it is mostly MSG. Okay. 
Okay, for the hotel recipe. That's the recipe I'll be working off of. Um, I'm going to make a half batch of that because I don't think Lalo can eat all of it. hybrid with the flowers because why not experiment and make Lala our guinea pig? I'm having a very fulfilling lunch today, y'all. I don't know about you. Just like texture and crunchies all the way. calls for a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. I'm going to be using rye, bread flour, and chickpea flour. Let's go with 20 grams of chickpea. grams of rye. And mostly bread. Oh, oven's off. I'm just letting them dehydrate in there, but thank you for a reminder.
And then we have cornstarch, baking powder, baking soda. You know what I'm also going to uh, do on this batch? I'm going to add a little bit of yeast, just like a touch, because I wonder what that will do to the structure and the flavor. Like an eighth of a teaspoon of yeast. Sugar. I'm going to give her a little more fun in here. So let's go in with a little bit of um, flax and sesame. I want the black sesame though, where are you? She'll like it. Maybe she won't. I don't know. So this is a, a little departure from our usual yokyo. yesterday's live and yes these are very cool sweatpants that I got for like two bucks from Kmart one time once upon a time I'm gonna add a little bit of white pepper just a teensy bit I don't know why I'm doing all of these things I just want to do them and um Yesterday, we used up our honey jar, but you know how you always have residual honey in the jar? I can't stop thinking about this, but either mom or grandma told me once upon a time, like, always rinse it out and drink the water and don't let the honey go to waste. So we're going to go ahead and rinse out this honey jar and put it into the dough. I'm sure it'll be a fantastic addition. So we only need um, three eighths of a cup of cold water. And if one eighth of a cup of water is 30 grams, then three eighths is 90 grams. So we need 90 grams of water, okay. That was 60 grams. Eighty 
37 grams. And that's it. I'm going to coat this in oil after I knead it together. And that concludes our instructional bantering programming for today. I'll probably end up spending the next 10 minutes eating random stuff. Um, but I hope you enjoyed watching me bake crackers, stir fry iceberg, eat QP salad dressing, and make dough. Very wet and sticky, probably because of all the different flowers that we used. Hopefully once uh, we let it proof a little bit, it'll get easier to work with. Um, I use mostly bread flour, so it should be okay. I also added flax seeds because flax seeds are actually really great at holding together dough because they turn a little bit gelatinous. told me. Make a paste of baking soda and oil, Yvonne, until it's nice and thick. And then spread it on your residue and leave it for five minutes and then scrub it. Umego.
Sochi is like very salty. I don't know if it's gonna be the best thing for you to eat for health reasons, but it is kind of pickled and fermenty, which are relatively uh, advantageous to your gut health, I guess, based on current research. I don't know. Our nutritional science is constantly changing. Next thing you know, it's gonna give us random diseases. We just don't, we just don't know. Take a vacation on Delicious Dime? I wonder how we're gonna make that happen. At this point, I don't think I can go away to VK, guys. I just, I think Grandma's gonna freak out if I leave for more than a couple of days at a time and um, it's just not quite feasible. Can't have that on my hands, can I? she's always happy to see me because if I'm not there then what is she seeing literally nothing so I'm better than nothing that makes sense is that it I think that's it I will bring you to see Fred my children. Hello. Hello. No interest in my crackers, Freddy. Look at that, but donk donk. <laughs> you kicking me away. You can't handle all this bootylicious. <laughs> We are approaching the danger zone in three, two, oh, almost, almost got him. Why, you don't want to see? You don't want to let other people see how much you tear me apart? Uh, I guess he's not going to rough me up today. All right, folks, have a good week ahead. I hope you have a good rest of your Sunday. Um, and take your vitamins, stay hydrated, get a little more sleep than you think you need, and just take it day by day, like Fred. And drink some tea. Drink some tea, don't throw up, um, eat some crackers, make some cake, maybe don't stir fry your iceberg. Bye, Freddy.